Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be here to discuss four plant species that have become naturalized in <coughs> KZN. I am presenting on behalf of my co-author, Sresh uh, also from the Invasive Species Program, uh, Neil Crouch, who's not from the program, but also from uh, BRAM, the same division, and then uh, John Semple from the University of Waterloo. The most comprehensive exposition you'll find of the South African National Biodiversity Institute's Invasive Species Program and how they go about things, you will find will be in Wilson et al, published in 2013, where they explain the mandate and rationale behind the program, but also they make a distinction between listed and unlisted species. Listed species being those contained in NEMBA, the regulations, versus unlisted species, where there are no uh, legislation or laws surrounding, the, surrounding them. But then there's also another category, plants on the suspect list, the species under surveillance for possible eradication or containment targets. So they are on the list, but they are unlisted, technically, and in that sense, these four species are unlisted. The presentation will be a summary of uh, information from short publications on those four taxa and the three highlights, or among the highlights of them, you'll notice that they are all new world plants. You'll also notice that um, they are all um, reported by botanists outside of the invasive species program and Three of, the, of these four, the bottom three, are the first confirmed records for South Africa. Two models were used in our assessment um, of these species. The first was the Australian Weed Risk Assessment that was developed and published by Pilung et al. in 1999. It consists of 49 questions evaluating a species' biogeography and ecophysiology. And based on that, you'll get a value, which will fall between minus 14 or 29. Broadly, it's divided into three categories. Anything between minus 14 and zero will be acceptable species. Between zero and six will be data deficient. You'll need to co collect more data and run the model again. Anything above six will fall in the reject category. And what is being rejected here is the import permit. So this model is, was designed for screening species before they are imported. We're doing it backwards, but it is still a very useful starting point. The second uh, scheme that we'll be using is that of Blackburn et al., uh, published in 2011, which is a bit of a busy graph, a uh, busy image. It's based on four stages, transport, and then introduction into cultivation, then establishment, and then, of course, eventually spread. The six blue pillars you see there are the barriers, which indicate that not all of the species, very few of them actually, get to the spread stage. Um, the ones that we're interested in are the ones that survive the transport, the introduction, where they're in cultivation, and the Invasive Species Program is, of course, focusing on things that have a limited distribution, things that there's a question mark whether it's going to be a problem. So an important distinction for us is whether something is moving between the C state, C naught, C1, where it's got a um, self-sustaining population, maybe outside of cultivation, but is it moving on its own or is it moving with people? And at any point, of course, you can have in invasion failure. The well-known boom and bust um, occurrence where the sudden spread and expansion is a temporary thing. The first of the species is Pitiveria aliesi, a weed risk assessment score of 19. It spreads by epizoochore, um, <coughs> which is uh, basically the, the fruit have barbs that adhere to clothes or fur. And it's one of the few that we've 
of these that we can actually find a point of introduction. It was introduced in the late 19th century at the, the Devon Botanic Gardens as an ornamental. It clearly dropped off in its popularity as an ornamental because gardeners today don't know it. I've never seen it in the garden yet. But we found quite a bit of it, just shy under 800 plants, um, was in the Devon Botanic Gardens, the Cuisine Hotel Herbarium Grounds, and the block of flats opposite, across the road, in their garden. Then the D2 stage invasion. Um, we found it also in another nature reserve as the crow flies three kilometers away, which is an important point. You see its distribution. It is naturalized um, outside of its native range, Benin and the Far East, and now South Africa. All the distribution maps here were done with GBIF data, Global Biodiversity Information Facility information. It has small delicate flowers in long racemes and broad glossy leaves, glossy green leaves that smell of um, garlic when you crush them. Hence the oleaceae, the, the Latin for garlic. The uh, flowers are replaced by fruit with barbs on them. You can see how it can be confused with Acheranthes species that also different family but it spreads in the same way. The next part is from a different family, the cactus family. Echinopsis oxygona. Weed risk assessment score of 12. Although not high, still clearly in the reject category. One colony was discovered recently in the Tugela, Tugela Valley Basin. It's yes, an interesting plant, a bit of a tricky one. The, the, the triangle is the first confirmed record for South Africa. However, on the Southern African Plant Invader Atlas, there are other points where you've got reports of Echinopsis-type cushion cacti. So this plant may already be more widespread, depending upon the, the species-level identification of those points. This particular cactus is indigenous to Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, and Argentina, but it has become naturalized in a wider area outside of its range. You'll notice quite a few, um, not that many blue dots. And that is a common problem with uh, cacti. Because identifying them down to species level is quite a trick, there are often, in many of them, you have very few points on GBIF and databases like that, which is a bit of a challenge when you need to set up um, bioclimatic models. This one only had four points with coordinates, so no point in starting. We did not notice any fruit, but we did notice quite a few buds that have much more pronounced spines than the mature individual. That might be one way that it is spreading by adhering to um, people and animals moving past. It produces quite big uh, flowers, about 20 centimeters uh, long. They open at night and stay open for the next one or two days. Um, very interesting wool, sort of woolly hairs that it's got on the outside of the flowers and the tepals have got a distinct puce purple tinge to them, which is different to the Echinopsis shikandantia, which is a widespread one, which is pure white. That's a full from on view there. You can see Echinopsis genus characteristic of the two sections of the um, Anthers that are, you've got a whorl on the outside fused to the tube of the flower, the corolla, and then the inner section. The third plant, third plant is from the Fibaceae family, Mimosa albida. Um, <clears throat> like the other Mimosa species, Mimosa pigra and pudica, it also produces um, these conspicuous uh, pink capitate flowers, and it's also a spiny plant with leaves that are sensitive to the touch that close in on each other. The weed risk assessment score is the highest, with 22, and 61 plants were found along the Mkumazi River, along a one and a half kilometer stretch uh, near Richmond, in the southern Midlands. We Felt this one is at the C3 invasion stage with a self-sustaining population outside of cultivation. 
and, re and reproducing. Quite a wide indigenous range and not that many reports of naturalization outside of that range. It's a very tough, um, scraggly looking plant that has quite a wide ecological tolerance. It's been found inside wetlands and here completely outside a wetland. It's a prolific seed producer um, and the, the leaves are quite characteristic. Once you've seen them, you, you can't miss them. They look very different to the other mimosa species with much fewer leaflets and they're much broader. This is a, a Maxent um, bioclimatic model which predicts quite a wide range through which it can spread. Um, so based on this and the fact that Mimosa pudica and Pigra have been found higher up into KZN and to Mpumalanga, and this one is up to Limpopo, it is definitely something that has a place on the suspect list. The final species that I want to talk about is Solidago altissima, variety pluricephala. Uh, it's got a weed risk assessment score of 20, and it's a perennial with clonal growth. Um, you can see the species epithet, altissima, it can go quite tall, and the tallest we found it is 2.35 meters um, so far in South Africa. Calvay and co authors found Solidago gigantea in the Underberg region in 2014. A species that, that was the first record for South Africa as on the cultivated plant catalogs we've only got canadensis. Canadensis is acknowledged as a separate taxon, but what's also been realized is that Altissima and Gigante have been confused with it. So when we found this, when this found species, was, uh, species was detected outside Harding, and Hilton, it was an interesting question exactly what are we dealing with. Um, clonal growth is quite important. In other words, this could be the same individual. They spread vegetatively. Um, and it, Altissima itself is found naturalized in Australia and uh, Japan. Europe and also recently um, Belgium. The, again, a, a bioclimatic model run with Maxent. The white areas are where it is likely um, to spread. And you'll, see, you'll notice that the, the triangle is Solid Solidago Gigantea, the two dots, Altissima variety Pericephala. And the white area corresponds more or less with the grassland biome. In summary, all four species have got weed risk assessment scores falling in the, in the reject category. Betiberia aliasi is only known from the Durban area, um, but it's been in the country for decades. For Echinopsis oxygona, only one population was detected in the last year in the Tugela Valley Basin. And Mimosa albida, we found one population um, of 61 plants spread along a bend of the Nkumazi River, but model, the climate model predicts that it can spread um, quite a bit further, should it get the opportunity. Then Solidago altissima, variety pluricephala, we know of the three populations, the third there being one from <coughs> Cape Town, which was not in the distribution map because it's a, a cultivated population that's been left to its own. Um, also has a high weed risk assessment score, but the climate model does predict that it could spread quite a bit further. So there's a lot of work went into the four species to be able to say that they have a place on the suspect list but further research and work is necessary to know whether any further recommendations for the, um, 
um, for them on limber or not on limber is needed. We would very much like to acknowledge Jeff Nichols and Isabel Johnson and Graham Grieve for um, reporting the, the initial localities of three of these, and of course the funders, the South African National Department of Environmental Affairs, without whose support this research would not have been possible. Thank you for your time.